Changi in Singapore. A quick workout or stress reliever at DXB Dubai. And in the US, MIA, Miami International. Operating since 1929 and today going big when it comes to high tech. MIA, Miami. Spend a lot of time transferring through Miami and go to the Caribbean every year. Miami is an airport that has, I believe, vastly improved. Miami's unique selling point are the 36 non-stop international flights to Latin America. MIA is a gateway to the region. Technology is the airport's new frontiers, and like most things these days, it starts with an app. MIA Airport Official tells me how to get from A to B and back again. Welcome to the MIA official app experience. Your personal travel assistant. Bold claims. We aim the police. MIA's director of telecommunications, Morris Jenkins, makes sense of it all. So let's take dining. Let's try Cuban food. Within that, you'll get the navigation screen to give you turn-by-turn mm -hmm. -turn navigations, and you hit that, and we'll start the process of walking you from where we're standing now to get to La Carreta. It says here we need to make a left turn. Right. Right. So we need to make a left and go down the escalator. A twist here, a turn there, and finally, we're there. Are we, are we here? Yeah, we're at La Carreta. Excellent. Yeah. I have a, I might have a tropical shake. Let's do it. A tropical shake for the young man. Uh, just one for him, and I'll have a colada sin azúcar, por favor. What sort of technology do travelers found useful? They've enjoyed the mobile app. They've enjoyed what we've done by integrating the passport control application within our mobile app that was approved. They find that to work exceptionally well for them. When it comes to airport technology, nowhere is the introduction faster than in security and immigration. Miami is the first airport in the United States to do away with all these machines in one part of the airport and instead has gone for a total facial recognition system. Quite simply, my face is my entry into the country. Here, your entire face is your ID, pulled from biometric and biographic data. My face, the contours, the features, become a roadmap to my identity. The system is pulling information from previous visa, passport applications and the like. It's verifying that I'm a match for what's already certified and on file. And if it all checks out, I'm cleared. The US Customs and Border Protection says traditional controls can take up to two minutes per passenger. With biometrics, it can process 10 passengers per minute. Gonna move her over to the check-in point. Biometrics is not Miami's only leap into the future. One of the drivers of technology is Jim Peters, the chief technology officer at CETA, a global tech company servicing more than a thousand airports. Here, the latest foray into the airport of the future is Kate. Kiosk Autonomous Terminal. Kate is basically a kiosk, but it can get up and move around, so it's not plugged in and it's not got a network connection. It uses Wi-Fi and batteries, so it basically can be used to move to the area of the airport where there's more congestion. You, you've got empty kiosks there, you've got full kiosks there. If only we could move those from there to there. Uh, nice to meet you, Kate. Welcome to the wireless world. Does Kate actually work? Yes, Kate works. Right, get the cameras. <laughs> We're gonna put Kate to the test. This is a novel idea, isn't it? Oh, that's very clever. It all looks very good, except for one thing. Economy! <laughs> Virtual reality, another step forward for MIA. I'm in one of the three ground control towers at MIA. The place bristles with technology, state-of-the-art equipment designed to help aircraft move safely on the ground. What if a control centre could reimagine an airport in any type and condition, anywhere? 
This is the Microsoft HoloLens. It is VR on steroids. With these goggles, I can visualize plane activity. This video demonstrates what I'm seeing. What's the cleverness of the HoloLens? The, the interesting part is they call it mixed reality. So instead of only seeing what you normally see or you know, being completely immersed, this actually allows you to, to get both at the same time. The range and extremity of what it can do is enormous. Whilst you innovate at this end, at the end of the day, the, the, the goal of the mission remains the same. You've got to get people from A to B. It does, and uh, it, it, it can sometimes be difficult to be saying, look at how innovative we are, when you at the same time have a lot of people with these airport experiences that are, are, are often you know, stressful and, and not, not, not all enjoyable. More than 250 million passengers combined will pass through SIN, CDG, DXB, and MIA. The idea of enjoyment, one of the many challenges these and other world airports face. They'll meet the challenge time and again. So legions of road warriors like me have less of this and more <laughs> of this. And so back to Changi with its ponds of fish, orchids, bromeliads, sculptures and installations. You simply don't find this level of detail to the passenger experience in other airports, which is why Changi remains number one. And that's CNN Business Traveller for this month. I'm Richard Quest in the airports, gateways of the world. Wherever your travels may take you, I hope they're profitable. And I'll see you next month. I'm Julia Chatterley. I'll speak to newsmakers, risk takers, and the ultimate game changers. First Move with Julia Chatterley, weekdays on CNN. Still on the of the night is here with all the right of our fish. Try to reopen our sky. It's tearing me apart. Must be something that I can do. We've got a fragile heart. There's always more to discover in a city that doesn't stop. Stay longer.